Welcome back to the Anxiety Slayer podcast. I'm Shan Vanderleek, here with my wonderful friend and partner, Ananga Sivir. And today we're responding to a question from our private Facebook group about worrying and anticipating negative responses from people in our lives. And this is huge. I've been there. I know you've been there, Ananga. Yeah. It's a really painful and sticky concern, isn't it? It's really preoccupying. No one likes to feel judged or misunderstood or receive negative responses. And I think what we know from Ayurveda and different mind and body types and anxiety, we know that most people living with anxiety are very sensitive people in a good way. They're sensitive souls and they're deeply affected by conflict and criticism and usually have a strong need for harmony in their lives. I know I do. That's a top priority for me is harmony and communication and and relationships. We find comfort in understanding and being understood. So this is a real core concern, a core anxiety. And today we're going to talk about what helps. Starting with the stronger we feel inside, the better we can cope with what comes from the outside. This is where self-care comes in. This is where positive self-talk comes in. And of course, our personal resilience varies from day to day. Some days you feel like you can take on the world and other days you feel like you want to hide from it. But that's the way of life, isn't it? It is. (laughs) (laughs) And if we work to support ourselves, our boundaries, the buffer that we can create around our our energy, it will gradually expand and we will, you will feel a lot more weatherproof. Yeah, I think it's really important to start there. The anxiety is such an inside job. So sometimes we just don't feel good inside. We're struggling already inside. So then when more comes in, in, in the, uh, the form of criticism or unwelcome feedback or negative responses to what we're already going through, it can really hurt. It can really destabilize us and really cause us to suffer. So we have a duty of care to ourselves to do the work, to feel more calm, more grounded. And I think one way to begin with that is to get very clear about our own personal values so that they feel really solid. What's the quality of our integrity and our commitment to what matters in our life what are the things that come what may hold true for us the real foundation rocks of our eternal concept and to get very clear about that and build on that and that's where we start to get a sense of stability and all of us are in a space of potentially being judged uh, at any given time, whether we're at work or at school. For some reason, I'm being led to talk about when you're in a work environment and you are doing your very best to complete a project or do the best you can uh, in caring for your client or whatever it is you may be doing. And then you might have a manager who comes down really hard on you for something that they may or may not understand. And then you chew on that and you worry about that and you go into this place of really starting to beat yourself up when perhaps they might have misunderstood. They might have not known how to communicate kindly and clearly and and constructively. So this kind of leads us to the reflection of who are we willing to be judged by? Because to a degree, we, we have to receive feedback from the people we work for. And do we respect them if they're giving us negative feedback? Do we listen and do what we can to make changes in that space? And of course, if we need to be in regular contact with them, how are we going to behave? And so this took me down the work path because... All of us work for a living, and we have to manage different people and 
and different criticism and judgments all the time. So if you get clear about that, it's going to help you move forward. And also, if we understand the difference between judgment and constructive criticism. For example, judgment is, Shan, the sound quality of the voice work that you did for me was shit. I'm not sure where you recorded it, if you were like in a tin can, but seriously, you have to take care of that. Okay, that's pretty harsh, right? (laughs) That, That would make you feel pretty bad, especially if you did your best and for some reason didn't realize that there was something wrong. Constructively, that person could come back and say, you know, I noticed that the sound quality on this isn't up to the standards that it normally is. Can you look into that? I'm not sure if there was an issue with the setting or or what have you, but I'd really like to see it cleaned up if possible. I mean, can you feel the difference in the energy there? Yeah. And again, it speaks to the second question, do we respect those that give negative feedback? Because if somebody's giving constructive feedback, you can work with them and you can make the changes and you're going to be able to go backwards and and forwards comfortably. When these things come in and we're stronger in that sense, we can look at them more objectively and we can think, okay, I really respect this person, so this is challenging, but I'm going to try and take it on board and see if we can work through it. Or this is too strong, it's too rude, it's too personal, I'm not comfortable letting this in. So we start to gain those stronger boundaries. Yes. And there's something so pleasing when you realize that you can make that choice and the more times that you do make the choice to set up your boundaries your buffer the easier it becomes and then you don't have to deal with these rude folks as much as you might think you do you don't have to be in regular contact with them if it, if it's a direct supervisor or somebody in your family You might have to be in more regular contact with them, but you learn how to navigate that contact and you learn how to let whatever comes out of their mouth kind of roll off of you because oftentimes they're clueless or foolish or living in a completely different world than you are (laughs) and you don't have to take it. Yeah. And sometimes it's not as personal as we think. Oh, so often it's not as personal. And we'll talk about that after the break. Now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. Have you ever been in a place where you feel stuck and seem to focus on only the problems in your life instead of looking for solutions? What if you learned how to change your mindset? Partnering with a therapist can help you become a better problem solver which makes it a lot easier to accomplish your goals. And therapy offers an avenue to help with anxiety, depression, and emotional healing. BetterHelp is an excellent offering if you're thinking of giving therapy a try. The experience is convenient, accessible, affordable, and entirely online. And you can be matched with a therapist quite quickly after filling out a short online form. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can help you get there. Visit betterhelp.com slash slayer today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash slayer. Before the break, we were talking about how not all negative feedback uh, or what we receive as negative feedback is personal. And most of the worry we have about what other people think often isn't grounded in reality. It's a story that we create. It's a a way that our ego can get out of control and completely take hold of the narrative. Once you start to see it, that's where the magic comes in. Yeah. Again, to remember that often when we're struggling with anxiety, our internal narrative is anxiety informed Mm -hmm. it's running through that filter and we're very vulnerable to that to that spiking 
That kind of example is a really good cause for EFT tapping, which we often talk about on the podcast, and you can look our episodes up to learn more about that. There's different ways of, of diffusing our responses to things, and we can also use EFT tapping to diffuse our responses to people that are disturbing us. Right. Grab the diagram at anxietyslayer.com forward slash EFT and uh, learn more about tapping, but you can really use it to feel more comfortable, more calm in the presence of others that might be sending some difficult messages your way. And being aware of our looping thoughts and these complete screenplays that we create. So if we continue with the example of, of a manager in your workplace, as soon as you become aware that you're creating an entire story around something, that they have probably pretty much forgotten about it after it came out of their mouth <laughs> or after the email came across your, your desk or in your inbox, where you'll take it and make it just this wild ride, right? And so tapping can help there as soon as you feel that coming on. Or you can really bust yourself and say, okay, what good is it to track every word that I say or every move that I make? Because this is something else that we do, not just in the workplace, but out in the world or with friends or with family, or maybe you've just met somebody new or a new client where you're having a conversation and maybe you are in a wonderful spot and you're just being yourself and you're speaking your truth and you're shining and you're like, yeah, you know, having this conversation. But then when it's over later on, you might start picking it apart. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. Oh, why did I do this? Oh, I came on too strong. Oh my goodness. They're going to think I'm X, Y, and Z fill in the blanks because that's all a part of this worrying about negative responses from people in our lives as well. All of the people that you touch. And I can speak to that personally because I have a really big mouth and a bubbly personality. And when I'm on and out in the world, what you see is what you get. And it feels really good until it doesn't. And not so much now as I have grown as a human being, but when we first started this podcast and, and earlier than that, I was worried about every single move I made, every word, but I, it didn't stop me from doing it. <laughs> it just invited me to rip it apart and, and track it afterward, almost looking for any uh, hole in the boat. Yeah, and there's a certain type of mind type that will do that. And again, that's where it's really helpful to get to know ourselves and know how we operate because this doesn't work the same for everyone. Um, so it's, it's just really good to have those insights and have a good sense of ourselves. Are we going to anticipate ahead of time? Somebody might say this, somebody might do that, or are we going to pick it apart after time? It's different mind types that will do that, whether they're going to go future anticipatory anxiety or retrospective picking it apart, anxiety. It's good to know ourselves and know how we operate, and it just gives us some, some room. It gives us a buffer to look at, okay, this is how this works for me, and you know what help can I get? We can learn to communicate differently. We can learn how to be more waterproof and more resilient, and we might have to make it a lifelong learning, but it, it's worth it because it changes our experience day to day, and it gives us different coping strategies. Um, I've had to really learn about boundaries in my life, and you've been very helpful to me, Shan, with that. There, there are so many skills we can learn and look back and say, you know, this has made a real difference to how I handle things. I was just thinking this morning about something that, you know, five years ago I would have dealt with a completely different way, and I'm glad I've learned how to do it differently. So my point with most anxiety is that we can always learn we can learn techniques to, to diffuse it, to deal with general anxiety, anxiety attacks, what can feel very deep and personal anxiety about receiving negative input, negative feedback from others that really can feel like arrows being shot at us. It can be such a, a difficult thing, but we can learn how to deflect those arrows. My angle on this kind of anxiety is to care about yourself, 
enough to take the time to learn new skills and, and just get a really good respectful sense of yourself and your values so that you're a bit more waterproof or a lot more waterproof and you feel more comfortable, more comfortable in yourself and really know yourself so that when stuff comes in, it can slide right off. What you just said made me think about a conversation with one of our listeners who was receiving some negative feedback from a family member because they didn't understand everything that the listener was experiencing when they were feeling completely overwhelmed and overwrought with anxiety. So there was some feedback around, I don't understand why you can't just do this or take care of this or show up for this or whatever the the case may be. And our dear listener came back with this wonderful feedback that said, okay, you don't understand how it feels to be anxious. So I'm going to give you an example. And perhaps maybe then you won't judge me so harshly or expect me to be different than I am. You know, when you're in your car and maybe you pick up the phone to respond to somebody in a text, even though you know you shouldn't do that, but you do it. And the next thing you know, you've almost run into or had a collision with the car in front of you. And how that feels when you slam on the brakes and the phone goes flying and you feel like you're completely freaked out and also so very grateful that you're okay, but you don't really know how to. Yeah, it feels like that. (laughs) And of course, the other person is like, oh my gosh, yeah, I know exactly how that feels. I have, I've been there. Well, that's how it feels. And so when we're in that space, you cannot expect all of these things that you expect because from our point of view or my point of view, and in her case, that's what's going on. And often that's what's going on many, many days of, of my life. And so I don't really know if that goes with this. It kind of goes with the the conversation we had a couple weeks ago about teaching others, those who love us, about what's going on and, and how to be more mindful and maybe not as critical. I think it does go here as well, though, because it's another example of having a sense of internal respect and understanding where you know what anxiety feels like sufficiently to be able to convey it to somebody else in a way that they can relate to. I think it's really smart. And it worked. And it worked. And we've all got our different ways of doing that. And I'm not talking about the 2 a.m., you know, what I'd like to say to you because you hurt me a year ago kind of things, which tend to come to us in the the hours of darkness, those wonderful things that are just waiting for us. But this it's not that. It's Let me give you an example that you might be able to relate to of how this feels. I think it's really good. And also it's self-respecting. It's standing up for your own experience. And it's important to also remember that when you're being hard on yourself and worried about what other people think, or perhaps reeling from some feedback that you received, this is a great time to look for evidence that you're doing okay based on your life experiences, where you are today, and all you've accomplished. It's important that you know that you are not defined by this judgment, this criticism, this feedback. And if need be, I recommend that you get this on the page. Get your worries on the page. Do some journaling to build that thread of awareness around your identity, your priority, and your values. And the proof, the life experiences, the choices you've made that bring you to where you are today because you are so much more than your anxiety. So much more. Yeah, and so much more than an ill-aimed arrow. No doubt. For me, journaling has been the very best medicine through anxiety, through understanding and supporting myself, through traumatic experiences in my life, through health crises in my life. Journaling has given me a thread of continuity that I genuinely don't think I would have without writing. Oh, yeah, that's the evidence that I was speaking of. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We also 
want to touch on Bach flower remedies. You've heard us talk about them many, many times over the years. They are flower remedies that are natural remedies developed by Edward Bach, an English homeopath in the 1930s. And Ananga has used them for many, many years. I have been using them for the last decade, and they really have been a a great help. And so we have a few remedies that we recommend if you are suffering and worrying about negative responses from people in your life. You want to share what those are, Ananga? Yeah, the first one is called Mimulus, which is one of a collection of over 30 remedies. And we'll tell you in a moment where you can find out more and where you can get them. There are a few bark flower remedies that can help calm anxiety in different ways, a variety of different ways. Once for when we feel anxious and uneasy, but we can't say why. We just feel really shaky and we've just got this feeling that something terrible might happen. There's one for that. But this one that we're going to share here, Mimulus, is for when we know why. We know what we're worried about. It offers support for social anxiety, um, for when we might feel uncomfortable or shy socially, worrying about what we might say. And it can also support fears like being judged or feeling uncomfortable with exchanges with others. This is a really nice choice and a nice support for the kind of anxiety we're talking about in this episode. The next one, we've already shared an example of of this kind of thinking. White chestnut is um, something we often recommend on the podcast. It's the remedy to help calm looping unwanted thoughts, those broken record thoughts, the kind of anxiety that gets stuck in our head and just keeps repeating over and over conversations. Things we've said that we're worried about, things others have said that we're worried about or have hurt us, things others might say that we're worried about hurting us. It's a great remedy for ruminating anxiety that might keep us up at night going over and over things that we're worried about. And the next one is a really beautiful remedy, Larch. Larch is the remedy that helps build confidence. It helps support us in trusting our abilities, trusting our choices. And it helps us stop making negative comparisons between ourselves and others. It's a real confidence boost remedy. And you can find all of these remedies in most good health food stores. And they're also available online at Nelson's or Amazon. You can also Google Bark Flower Center, which is the original center in Oxfordshire that honors Dr. Bark's work. And you can learn more about the different remedies, how they're made, and different recommendations. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Anxiety Slayer. And we do want to let you know quickly that following many of your requests, we are working on a new course for calming anxiety with Ayurveda. And the course will be available at the Anxiety Slayer Academy later this year sometime. And if you want early access, we're releasing the new lessons as we create them to our top tier patrons. Become a top-tier patron and get early access to what is sure to be a popular course for anxiety relief. You can learn more about becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash anxiety slayer.